All right, so I started in, let's see here. Well, Monica started in 2005. Started MD Custom Arcs in Glendale. Then I joined the team technically here in 2010. And so this used to be my office. And now we are converting this into methylene blue lab. So let's turn on this hood. It's going to get a little loud in here. I am going to garb up and we're going to start making some methylene blue. So that's not the right side. How much time did it take to set up this entire lab? Because you actually built this. Yep, so this lab took about, I would say with all construction, took oh, a couple of months. I would say about two months with putting everything together. Here's my methylene blue. It's like you put your glove on when your hands are wet. Exactly. You, you'd think this looks... Try to rush it and then... Yep. <sighs> Got her. All right, we're in. All right, top of hood. Oh, super important to do that. Get that thing going. Scaly never shut off. Why? It takes two hours to warm up a scale like that. We are gonna get some pieces of equipment out. One important thing, this may, may look dirty, but this is only used for methylene blue. We specifically just have one sp specific capsule machine that only touches methylene blue. So no cross-contamination, which is important, obviously. And let's get some more pieces of the puzzle here. There's a, there's a class you can take to uh, put all this together, and there's training manuals, training documents. And when did you start making methylene blue? So we started making, seriously started making methylene blue about two years ago. So we found the importance of this methylene blue can really help with a lot of neurodegenerative decline in a lot of patients. So. I'm going to set that off to the side for right now. Let's load some capsules in here. I don't think I want to do 300 though. I'm going to, we're going to make just a few capsules today. We're not going to make a ton. Let's just tape that off. I'm going to load that up with some capsules. Size three. See if, let's see if I can do this right. Aha, got that part done. Let's start weighing some stuff out. So I'm gonna do some quick math. We're gonna make 10 milligram capsules times 24. Scoopula, scoopula, scoopula. The size of your mortar and pestle matter. I'm sure you've heard that before. That one's too big. So when you're mixing this up the old fashioned way, which is what I'm doing, you want to put a little bit of your base powder in your mortar so that you fill up those cracks in your API, your methylene blue does not get in there and you lose some of your drug. So there is that. And we are going to geometrically dilute this methylene blue. And I should scrape the sides of this mortar, but we're gonna, for demonstration purposes, skip that step. So I'm gonna go right back in with this. How many days a week do you make methylene blue? So right now we're making methylene blue, I would say about two days a week. And our hope is that more providers learn the benefits of methylene blue, especially for patients with, again, neurodegenerative decline. I feel that this drug can be very helpful for those patients. So I would, I don't know the exact number of how many pharmacies are making methylene blue. I would say most compounding pharmacies that are on the, you know, cutting edge of functional medicine, functional pharmacy, like what I like to call, I would say the majority of them are probably making methylene blue at this point. 
It's become very popular for, in my opinion, for very obvious reasons. Biological benefits are profound, helping to rescue your mitochondria that are basically dying off and reviving them. It's just absolutely uh, amazing. And Let's get this powder in here, and I'm gonna do this very carefully. I need a scraper. basically a full year of, of compounding. So my professor was Judy Thompson, who actually wrote the book on compounding that I still have somewhere in this pharmacy. Maybe we could find that later. But And for me, compounding too just kind of kept growing on me. My father-in-law had, when I started working regular retail pharmacy at my father-in-law's pharmacy in Glendale, he had a little compounding lab about the size of, not even the size of this lab at the time. And at the time I thought it was kind of antiquated and you know, why are we doing this? But now I see Really, the value of compounding pharmacy, in my opinion, it's the that personalized medicine is really getting down to the specifics of each individual patient where it's not a one-size-fits-all. So you can get the exact dose for that patient based on their, you know, whether it's their labs that you're basing it on, their, their DNA profile, or you know, basically all the above, in my opinion. You can kind of see where I'm pressing some of these down, they're full, and some of these other ones I need a little more powder. That's right, yep, because you want to put the same amount of pressure on, you know, the capsule in the corner versus the capsule in the middle. You can kind of already see my capsule's more in the middle. They're full already, and that's where the powder, you know, tends to gravitate towards. So we've got to grab this powder and push it to the outside edges. I don't think I'm going to get all this powder in here today, but luckily these aren't going directly to a patient. Demonstrational purposes only, but you get the idea where... You can customize somebody's dose very specifically. I think I'm going to call that good. I know I got a little more powder in here, but I'm not going to get that burnt up. How many times do you usually punch it down before you actually say it's good? So we'll actually probably punch it down about 10 different times, and then we'll actually randomly weigh these capsules, the corners, the edges, the sides, and confirm that the weight of the capsules on the edges are within 6% of... The other capsules so I'm gonna push this up now and here's the unveiling there's my methylene blue capsule and this doesn't stain your mouth because on the internet the liquids very popular it's over the counter uh, with a prescription methylene blue. It's nice to make it in the capsule, then it doesn't have to stain your whole mouth. And then you've just got your capsules and you're good to go that way. So you're saying that over the counter they typically will use like a white, is it like a research chemical? Um, so there's different grades of methylene blue. They still, it depends on that. And that's one of the issues is we only use USP grade, pharmaceutical grade methylene blue, where the stuff that you're getting over the counter you should be looking for a certificate of analysis, basically documentation proof that you have the pharmaceutical grade. Otherwise, if you're getting more of the industrial grade, you can possibly be getting heavy metals in with the methylene blue, which is a part of the production process of actually synthesizing methylene blue. So you gotta be really careful that you're getting a clean API, a clean ingredient to start with right off the bat so you're not uh, basically contaminating yourself as you're trying to take something to help uh, for treatment. So. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy blue. Yeah. And that's why you were saying that obviously it stains immediately. And you said that it stains moving indefinitely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost impossible to get out. Yeah, there's... And then how about your hands or... Yeah, anything that this touches. Even this uh, stainless steel punch, you can see there's a stain to it. Yeah, a little cube. Yep, yep. Yeah. So it's... 
it's really hard to get this stuff perfectly clean. It's a six to 12 months where we built this lab with this intention to make sure we've got a very clean product going to the consumer, ensuring that there's no other cross-contamination with any other drug that we compound here. Uh, so our most popular is going to be the hormones. So we do a lot of bioidentical hormones with um, progesterone, which I accidentally talked about. Uh, progesterone capsules are very popular. A lot of the bioidentical hormones. One of my other favorite drugs is the uh, low-dose naltrexone that we compound. So we make a lot of low-dose naltrexone that's good for a lot of conditions, autoimmune issues, uh, a lot of doctors that will prescribe it. For Lyme disease, there's just a lot of autoimmune issues that I feel are, can be very, can be treated, can be very helpful to take low-dose naltrexone. So, and I don't have any methane glue in my hands, so that's good.